What if Qui-Gon Jinn survived and Dooku never turned? Let's start this story on Naboo. Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon face off against the Sith Lord Maul as the Master and Apprentice press the attack as Maul, the bloodthirsty warrior, went for the kill. But Qui-Gon saw an opening, a moment of overconfidence in the Sith Lord's strikes. He pivoted his green blade, slicing through Maul's defenses and plunging his lightsaber into his chest. Maul's eyes widened in shock as he stumbled back, his weapon deactivating and falling from his grasp. The Sith Lord toppled into the chasm below, his body swallowed by the darkness. Meanwhile above the planet, Anakin was assisting the Naboo fighters against the Trade Federation. Anakin manages to get inside the droid control ship and destroy it from the inside, deactivating all the droids on the surface, and they win the battle for Naboo. They head back to Coruscant, victorious, as Qui-Gon takes the news of the Sith's defeat to the Council. He stands before the Council, Anakin Skywalker at his side. Qui-Gon proclaims to the Council that Anakin's heroic actions on Naboo are further proof that he is the Chosen One and that it is the will of the Force that he be trained. Master Windu's brow frowned, exchanging a glance with Master Yoda as he tells Qui-Gon that the boy is dangerous and that his future is clouded. Yoda speaks up, telling Qui-Gon that he senses grave danger in his training, that the boy is simply too old. Frustration flickered in Qui-Gon's eyes, but he kept his tone measured, telling them Anakin has a gift and he must be nurtured. But Windu tells him that his emotions cloud his judgment. Qui-Gon took a deep breath, the weight of his decision pressing down on him as he tells the council that he must follow the will of the force and not the council, that if they won't train Anakin, then he will. Yoda spoke next, his voice with a hint of sadness, telling Qui-Gon that he can leave if he must and go down this path, but he will no longer be a Jedi. Qui-Gon bowed his head respectfully in response and took his leave from the Jedi Order. He met with Obi-Wan and Dooku later that day, and they both decided they would leave the Order with Qui-Gon. Obi-Wan was more loyal to his master than the Jedi Order. Dooku praised Qui-Gon for his confidence. He doesn't know whether he believes in Anakin yet, but he believes in Qui-Gon, and knows that the Jedi Order is no longer what it once was, and wants to be a part of Qui-Gon's solution to fix it. In this story, Dooku never turns to the dark side, and thus doesn't have any secret meetings with Palpatine, and doesn't start to do his bidding, and thus doesn't know the identity of the Sith Lord. The four of them decide to set up on Naboo, their house only 20 minutes outside the capital city of Theed. Padme welcomed them to the planet with open arms, the least she could do for all they had done for the Naboo people. Padme and Qui-Gon worked together on something he believed would be extremely beneficial for Anakin. Padme provided the finances and Qui-Gon went himself to Tatooine to free Shmi from slavery and brought her to Naboo. This made Anakin extremely happy and he'd no longer be burdened by the memory of his mother like he was in the original timeline. They spend weeks settling in, Anakin spending time with his mother and Qui-Gon stepping into the role of a father that Anakin never had. Together he alongside Dooku, helped to guide Anakin in the ways of the Force, but also the subtleties of life. Meanwhile Obi-Wan worked with the Naboo royalty to restore the planet to what it once was before the Trade Federation invasion, and he was acting how a true Jedi should, his commitment to peace and justice unshaken. Padme continued to visit Anakin and Shmi regularly, her presence a source of warmth and encouragement. Anakin in turn cherishes these moments, finding comfort in the connection he felt with her. Qui-Gon could sense the feelings between Anakin and Padme, and knew in his training, he'd either have to prepare Anakin for heartbreak or the emotions that would come with this attachment. Naboo provided the perfect backdrop for Anakin's training. The environment allowed him to focus and hone his abilities. Qui-Gon passed on his deep connection to the living force to Anakin, emphasizing the importance of living in the moment. Dooku with his disciplined approach, balanced this with rigorous training in lightsaber combat and advanced force techniques. Anakin's potential was evident from the beginning. His natural affinity for the Force, allowing him to grasp concepts and techniques with ease, and his growth was nothing short of extraordinary. Under their guidance, Anakin learned to control his emotions, a critical aspect of his training. The anger and fear that had once fueled him began to dissipate, replaced by a calm focus that Qui-Gon and Dooku encouraged. They both recognized the importance of channeling Anakin's immense power in a way that was harmonious with the Force, rather than dominated by it. Obi-Wan Kenobi's presence became a constant in Anakin's life, playing the role of an older brother, 
offering support and companionship. His lighter and more playful demeanor balanced out the stern and focused nature of Anakin's training. He would often join Anakin in sparring sessions, pushing him to his limits whilst also teaching him valuable lessons in strategy and patience. Their bond grew to become strong and unbreakable. During their time on Naboo, a connection blossomed between Qui-Gon and Shmi. Their shared concern for Anakin and the time spent together formed a bond that gradually turned into love. Qui-Gon admired Shmi's strength and resilience, traits that had undoubtedly shaped Anakin into the person he was becoming. Shmi found comfort in Qui-Gon's wisdom and kindness. Their relationship was a quiet one, built on mutual respect and shared desire to provide Anakin with the family he deserved. The months turned into years. Anakin's power continued to grow exponentially. His control over the Force became more refined, and his lightsaber skills were unparalleled for someone his age. The training he received from Qui-Gon and Dooku instilled in him a strong moral compass, a deep understanding of the Force and an ability to manage his emotions with clarity. Qui-Gon and Dooku ensured that he remained grounded, teaching him that true mastery of the Force was not about power, but about understanding and balance, teaching him the value of patience and the importance of compassion and strength found in inner peace. Anakin thrived under their guidance, becoming not only a skilled warrior, but also a wise and thoughtful individual. He was no longer the impulsive boy who had left Tatooine. He was becoming a Jedi in his own right, though outside the formal structure of the Order. The love and support from Qui-Gon, Shmi, Obi-Wan, and alongside the wisdom of Dooku had created a foundation that allowed Anakin to grow into his potential, a future Jedi Knight with a profound connection to the Force. One day whilst Dooku and Kenobi are off-world on a diplomatic mission, the peaceful routine of Anakin's life on Naboo was interrupted by a visit from Padme. She was a senator now, but was back on Naboo for a week and had a spare day. The sun was shining, casting a golden hue across the lush countryside, and Padme was eager to escape her work and suggested she and Anakin take advantage of the beautiful day. Together they leave behind the grounds of their cottage and venture into the heart of Naboo's breathtaking landscapes. They travel through the vibrant meadows, past sparkling lakes, and up into the rolling hills that offered stunning views of the world below. As they watched, they shared stories, laughed at memories, and enjoyed the simple pleasures of each other's company. Away from the prying eyes of the court and demands of their respective responsibilities, the adventure was spontaneous and carefree, filled with the kind of joy that neither of them had experienced in a long time. They rode together on a speeder bike, the wind in their hair and the exhilaration of speed adding to the thrill of the day. The more time they spent together, the more they realized how they had come to care for one another. Anakin now 18 and Padme 22. The sun began to set, casting long shadows across the landscape. Anakin and Padme found themselves on a secluded hilltop, overlooking the lake. The air was cool and the world seemed to stand still around them. It was in that quiet moment that their feelings for each other became undeniable. The connection they shared was more than just friendship. It was something deeper, something that had grown slowly but surely over the years. The day had brought them closer as they kissed under the settling sun. As the stars began to twinkle above them and they shared a quiet and tender moment that sparked the beginning of something new. They returned to the cottage that night. Both Anakin and Padme knew their relationship had changed, crossing the line of friends to something more. In this timeline, they didn't have to hide their relationship, and Qui-Gon and Dooku had prepared Anakin for the emotions and responsibility that came with attachments and were happy for him. Whilst Anakin was undergoing his training on Naboo, the galaxy was slowly being drawn into the web of a sinister plan. Palpatine's grand plan remained unchanged. He manipulated both sides of the galaxies, growing tensions, fostering unrest and division. The creation of the Clone Army commissioned, under the guise of protecting the Republic, and the emergence of a separatist movement, led by the intergalactic banking clan Sand Hill, were key elements of his strategy. The time came when the Confederacy of Independent Systems had grew large enough and the separatists declared war on the Republic, and the Clone War began. As the Clone War erupted around the galaxy, the Jedi were called upon to lead the Republic's forces against the separatists. However, Anakin, Qui-Gon, Dooku and Obi-Wan chose a different path. They saw through the political machinations at play and refused to be drawn into a conflict that they felt was driven by greed and manipulation rather than justice. Instead of joining the Republic's side, the four Jedi took on a different role in the war. 
They traveled from world to world, offering aid and assistance in the aftermath of every battle. Their mission was not to fight for one side or the other, but to help those caught in the crossfire. They healed the wounded, rebuilt communities, and sought to restore peace and balance wherever they went. This approach put them at odds with both the Republic and Separatists. Neither side trusted their neutrality, and they were often viewed with suspicion. Despite this, they remained steadfast in their commitment to helping the innocent and upholding the true values of the Jedi. Their efforts were not without risk. They faced danger on every planet they visited, from remnants of battle droids to hostile forces from both sides of the conflict. But their combined strength and wisdom allowed them to navigate these challenges. Anakin had reached the next step in his training, and Qui-Gon decided to take him, Dooku, and Obi-Wan to the ancient and mysterious Force Priestesses, beings of immense wisdom and held knowledge of the Force that few could comprehend, where he himself had trained as a young Jedi Knight. Each of them underwent individual training, designed to challenge their understandings of the Force and themselves. Obi-Wan confronted his fear and attachments, reaffirming his commitment to the Jedi ideals of balance and selfishness. Dooku too faced his inner conflicts, finding clarity in the wisdom he had gained through years of experience. Qui-Gon, already deeply attuned to the living force, explored the mysteries of the cosmic force, deepening his connections to the energy that binds the galaxy together. Anakin's training, however, was different from the others. The priestesses revealed to him the unique burden he must bear as the Chosen One, a responsibility that transcended anything he had imagined. They spoke in cryptic terms, showing him visions of suffering and hope, darkness and light, and the delicate balance that he was destined to maintain. Though Anakin tried to grasp the full meanings of these revelations, he was left feeling both enlightened and confused. As part of this training, the priestesses sent Anakin alone to Mortis, a mysterious realm where the Force was strong and ancient. It was a place beyond time, where the very essence of the Force could be felt. There, Anakin encountered the Father, an immensely powerful being who governed the balance between the light and dark sides of the Force through his children, the son and daughter. The Father tested Anakin to determine if he truly was the Chosen One. Anakin's raw power, his command over both light and dark, his children, confirmed to the Father that Anakin was indeed the one prophesied to bring balance to the Force. The Father, seeing the potential for both great good and great destruction within Anakin, implored him to stay on Mortis. He wanted Anakin to take over his role, to keep the son and daughter in check and maintain the balance within Mortis, ensuring that the galaxy would not fall into chaos. But Anakin, understanding the gravity of what was being asked, refused. He had a life outside of Mortis, a duty that extended beyond this isolate world. He spoke of his commitment to his loved ones, to Qui-Gon, his mother Shmi, and then to Padme. He knew his destiny was tied to the galaxy at large, where a war was tearing civilizations apart, and where he believed he was needed the most. The father, recognizing Anakin's resolve, revealed a secret to him. The existence of the font of power that flows through the pool of knowledge, a source of immense energy that could prolong his life. And through this, if Anakin brought the delicate energy from the font of power to the father, he could prolong his life. The father himself could not leave Mortis, and he could not do it himself. Anakin promised to the father with a solemn vow that if it meant preserving balance in the force, he would one day return to Mortis with water from the font of power and use this to prolong his life. In their final conversation, the father spoke with Anakin about the burden he must bear. He showed Anakin glimpses of the future, visions of the Clone War intensifying, the fall of the Jedi Order during Order 66, and the rise of the Sith. Anakin saw countless Jedi being slaughtered, the Republic crumbling, and the dark shadow of the Sith spreading across the galaxy. The father explained that in order to bring balance to the Force, Anakin would have to allow these events to unfold even though it would bring great pain and loss. The father also showed Anakin visions of the distant future, revealing how his actions would shape the galaxy for generations to come. Anakin saw both light and darkness in these visions, futures where hope persisted despite the suffering, and others where despair ruled unchallenged. The weight of these possibilities rested heavily on Anakin's shoulders, yet he understood that this was the burden of the Chosen One. Anakin left Mortis, feeling enlightened, and understanding of the burden he must bear. He returns to Qui-Gon, Dooku and Obi-Wan, who can all sense a change within Anakin. He has a newfound sense of purpose, a deep understanding of the Force, and an acceptance of the burden he must carry. The Clone War was nearing its conclusion, 
with the Republic gaining the upper hand. The war's most formidable adversaries, including Asajj Ventress and Savage Opress, have been defeated, and just the day prior, General Grievous had been destroyed by Kit Fisto. The tide was turning, and the end of the conflict seemed imminent. One morning, Anakin awoke with a profound sense of urgency, a feeling in the Force that the time had come. He knew the moment he had been preparing for, the moment the father on Mortis had warned him about, was at hand. He gathered Qui-Gon, Dooku and Obi-Wan, and together they set off for Coruscant, drawn there by the Force. Upon their arrival on Coruscant, they made their way to the Senate District, where Palpatine's office was located. From a hidden vantage point, they watched as the Jedi Council, led by Mace Windu, confronted Chancellor Palpatine. The Council demanded that Palpatine relinquish his emergency powers and step down as Chancellor, restoring peace to the Republic. Palpatine, however, had no intention of surrendering his power, and with a sinister smile, he revealed his true identity as Darth Sidious, igniting his crimson lightsaber. But that was not all. By his side stood Darth Maul, resurrected from the depths of death, ready to fight once more. The confrontation quickly escalated into a deadly duel between the Jedi Council and the Sith Lords. Dooku, filled with righteous anger, was ready to intervene, but Anakin stopped him. Anakin understood the burden he must bear, and knew this was the moment the father had spoken of. He knew he had to let the events unfold, painful as it was to witness. The duel was intense, but Palpatine and Maul, with their combined power, Maul far stronger in this timeline, having trained for an extra 12 years, proved too much for the council. One by one, the Jedi fell, and as Palpatine struck down the last of them, he activated Order 66, a command that unleashed chaos across the galaxy, turning the clone troopers against their Jedi generals. With the Jedi Order crumbling, and the galaxy plunging into darkness, Anakin knew that their moment had come. He led Qui-Gon, Dooku and Obi-Wan into Palpatine's office. The door slid open to reveal the four Jedi, and Palpatine's grin faltered as he sensed Anakin's presence. The power radiating from him was unlike anything the Sith Lord had ever encountered. A wave of fear washed over him, a fear that he hadn't felt in decades. In a desperate attempt to defend himself, Palpatine unleashed a force scream, a piercing wail that shook the foundations of the building, followed by a violent force storm that crackled with dark side energy. Lightning arced through the air, and the force was filled with the sounds of raw unchecked power. But Anakin stood firm, his connection to the force as steady as a mountain. Qui-Gon, Dooku, and Obi-Wan joined the fray, their lightsabers igniting in unison as they prepared to face the storm. Palpatine fought viciously like a cornered beast, but Anakin matched him blow for blow. His strikes fueled not by anger or hatred, but by a deep sense of duty and the knowledge of the burden he must carry. Palpatine attempted to destroy Anakin with a blast of lightning, but Anakin raised his hand, absorbing the dark energy and redirecting it back towards Palpatine. And the Dark Lord screamed as the power he had wielded for so long consumed him, and Anakin struck him down, his lightsaber ending the Sith Lord's life. The four Jedi looked outside the window at the Jedi Temple as clone troopers stormed its halls. Anakin knew that the destruction of the Jedi Council and the execution of the Jedi Order were not merely consequences of Palpatine's schemes, but were also tied to a larger purpose revealed to him on Mortis. There he had learned a profound truth about the Force that changed his perspective entirely. He explained this to Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, and Dooku, that the Jedi in their rigid adherence to the light side had grown too powerful, too dogmatic. Their strict exclusion of the dark side had upset the natural balance of the Force, creating a shadow, the Sith, that was destined to rise and challenge them. The Force was no longer in equilibrium, and both Jedi and Sith were responsible. Anakin had foreseen that the only way to restore balance was to allow both the light and dark sides to destroy each other. The fall of the Jedi through Order 66 was a necessary event, as painful as it was. The old orders, both Jedi and Sith, had to be purged to reset the Force and bring about a new beginning. The new Jedi would be different from their predecessors. They would embrace the Force without fear of the dark side, or an exclusive focus on the light, balance, not determined by one side or the other, would be their guiding principles. The others began to understand the weight of Anakin's burden, and they agreed with the necessity of this transformation. They accessed the security recordings to send footage of Palpatine being the Sith Lord, as well as documents from his computer that incriminate him as a Sith Lord to Bail Organa, who alongside the Security Council facilitate the execution of Order 65. Order 66 stops, however, 
the damage was done, and the Jedi Order had lost most of its members. What few survivors there were returned to Coruscant, including Grandmaster Yoda and other powerful masters. They meet with Anakin, Qui-Gon, Dooku, and Obi-Wan, who explained to Yoda that they defeated the Sith Lord Palpatine, who had executed Order 66, and Anakin had completed his role as the Chosen One. Anakin turns to the crowd of surviving Jedi who had returned, their spirits shaken, and the faith in the Jedi wavered. Anakin proclaims to them that he will start a new Jedi Order, free from the dogmatic ways of the old Jedi, where they will serve the people of the galaxy instead of the Galactic Senate. Emotions will be cherished and attachments allowed, but every member will have training to control the emotions that surround these attachments. He offers for any surviving Jedi to join, and the majority of them do. Even Master Yoda admits his wrongdoings, that he was too rigid in his ways and allowed the Sith to rise, and because of this, joined Anakin's order. They rebuild together, with the formation of a new council, spearheaded by Anakin, and they would lead the new Jedi Order into a new era of galactic peace. Hey guys, make sure to check out our Saber Shop Fantasy Sabers for the best Neopixel Sabers on the market. We have a bunch of perfect replicas and other insane Padawan Sabers for sale. Check them out on our website, first link in the description below, and grab your own one today. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out what if Anakin was reborn with all his memories after A New Hope, and what if Darth Vader joined the Bad Batch. Don't forget to check out Fantasy Sabers for the best Sabers on the market, and may the Force be with you.